Christian denominations celebrate Christmas praying to God to protect Syria. Syrian Arab army confiscate weapons and ammunition in Damascus countryside. Russia offers $2 million to support international efforts for eliminating Syria's chemical weapons. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and Merry Christmas, everybody. On the occasion of Christmas, the Mariamite Church in Damascus held joint prayers in which Christian and Muslim spiritual leaders took part, particularly Patriarch Yohanna the Tenth Yazuji of Antioch and all the Orient for the Greek Orthodox, the General Mufti of the Republic, Dr. Ahmed Badruddin Hassoun, heads of Christian denominations, a number of Islamic scholars and popular and official figures. The speakers underlined the special characteristic of religious tolerance in the Syrian society, which has offered the world human civilizations and heavenly religions, affirming that the citizens of Syria will confront all challenges on the basis of their love for the homeland. Christmas celebrations in Syria have been confined to prayers in view of current events in the country and in honor of the noble martyrs. The Christian denominations held religious masses and prayers in churches throughout the country, underlining the great meanings of love and peace. A religious mass was held at Marjurjo's Cathedral for the Syriac Orthodox, headed by Archbishop Jean Quark, head of the Patriarchal Bureau, and Archbishop Metta Khouri, the Patriarchal Secretary. Archbishop Khouri stressed the noble meanings of Christmas. He referred to the tragedies and terrorism Syria has been exposed to and the support rendered to terrorists by Arab regional and Western states that harbor vicious intentions towards Syria and aim at dealing a blow to the Syrian citizens' cohesion and coexistence. A mass was also held on this occasion at the Evangelic Church, in which head of the church, priest Ibrahim al Ser called on the Syrians to be vigilant regarding the danger of those who are driving them towards sedition, considering patriotism is one aspect of faith through which victory can be achieved over the greedy and the invaders. Worshippers in the various Syrian churches prayed to God Almighty to protect Syria and restore peace and security to it. Christmas Masses were also held at Fatima Church in Damascus, headed by Archbishop Elias Tribi of the Catholic Syriacs, Marilias Church for the Greek Orthodox, headed by Archbishop Luca Khouri, and at Azetun Church. The sermons underline the importance of maintaining cohesion among all the Syrians of all factions in order to confront the challenges of terrorism that target Syria and Syrian citizens overcome the crisis and restore peace and stability to the country. From the Nativity Church in Beit Lahm, the Patriarch of the Latin denomination in Jerusalem and all the Holy Lands, Fuad Tawwal, today addressed a message calling for consolidating faith in hearts and abandoning immigration, departure and seclusion. He said, the solution is for us to remain here and to live and die here because our land is sacred, which requires from us to stay. The Patriarch appealed to those who spread violence and devastation with the force of arms to reconsider their stand concerning whom they regard as their enemy and to refrain from hurting them because both sides are combined together with a bond of humanity. The Patriarch called for abandoning arms and restore, resorting to dialogue, tolerance and reconciliation. In a Christmas Mass held in Rome last night, Pope Francis of the Vatican said the marginalized were the first to understand the message of Jesus Christ that called for pardon, tenderness and mercy.
Pope Francis, who headed the two-hour mass, had arrived at the church together with 30 cardinals and 40 priests. Prayers were held and hymns were performed in Latin, as it has been the tradition in such masses. Christmas has been, meanwhile, celebrated in other regions of the world. The sermons glorified the occasion and the birth anniversary of Jesus Christ, the messenger of love and peace, stressing the need to spread such values among peoples and work to rescue humanity from injustice, poverty and starvation. In Baghdad, terrorists tried to make Christmas blended with blood as they attacked many churches, killing dozens of innocent people. Iraqi sources said that 14 people were killed and more than 30 others injured in a car bomb blast that targeted the Chaldean Church of St. John in Addora, south of Baghdad, where Christian prayers were participating in a Christmas Mass. Reacting to the terrorist attack, the pastor of St. Joseph Church of the Syriac Catholics in Baghdad, priest Pius Kasha, said that the attack is an evil and a heinous act that is totally rejected because the churches are places for love and peace, not for war and killing. Also in Iraq, Iraqi air aides continued to pound the hideouts of Al-Qaeda terrorist groups in Horan Valley, al Abyad, and Swab Wells, destroying all their caves and caches. Meanwhile, the forces of Al Jazeera and Al Badia continued to repel for the second day in a row attacks by terrorists from a Nusra group who tried to infiltrate from the Syrian territories, killing 11 terrorists and injuring dozens. countryside, Syrian Arab army units clashed with a terrorist group in Mahir area, which was trying to escape to Lebanese territories, killing and wounding most of its members. Army units killed armed terrorist groups members in an ambush in Arrestan when they attacked the civilian guards of Arrestan Dam. Another unit destroyed a terrorist den near Mustafa Basha Mosque in Babhud neighborhood, as another army unit targeted terrorist gatherings in Kisin village and Sheikh Ibrahim in Arrestan. The army also eliminated another terrorist group in Al-Ghasibiyya village, which was shelling a Dwer town with mortar shells. A Syrian Arab army unit has seized an arms warehouse in Bayadir Nadir in Damascus. Large quantities of weapons and ammunition were found, which were used by the terrorists in killing innocent civilians. The weapons confiscated included U.S.-made sniper rifles, hunting rifles and machine guns, in addition to big numbers of mortar shells and RPG and missile shells and Lao missiles. Also found in the den were Doshka, PKC and Klashinkov bullets, in addition to NATO sniper rifles, big amounts of detonators and military uniforms. Syrian Arab army units discovered a large amount of weapons, ammunition, mortar rounds and explosive devices in the Saqi farms in an Nabuk city. A military source said that an army unit seized a terrorist den containing explosives, big amounts of ammunition and up-to-date communication devices, adding that big amounts of mortar shells used by terrorists during targeting civilians in an Nabuk were found near the den. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov said that his country will offer two million U.S. dollars to support the international efforts on eliminating the chemical weapons in Syria. Ryabkov added that Russia fulfilled a great contribution to those efforts as the Russian military transport planes handed over 75 trucks to Syria to help secure the chemical weapons to outside the country. Ryabkov pointed out that Moscow will host a meeting next Friday which gathers experts from Syria, the U.S., the U.N., and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. 
The elimination of the chemical weapons in Syria will be done on two phases. The first is to get rid of the most dangerous weapons in December and then destroying them during next April. In Lebanon, a booby-trapped car driven by the terrorist Mohammed Subhi Bakanji from the terrorist Salafist group of Ahmed al-Asir exploded in Mahalla Tamir in Ain al-Hilwa refugee camp near the city of Sidon, south of Lebanon. Lebanese sources confirmed that the blast caused material damage in the car and its surrounding as the car caught fire. A Lebanese army force cordoned off the site while civil defense units contained the fire. Finally, in Turkey, both ministers of economy and interior, Zafer Chaglayan and Muammar Guler, announced their resignations today. The resignation of the two ministers followed the scandals that revealed the involvement of their both sons in corruption. On November 17th, Turkish security forces had started investigation in corruption cases and in accusations of money laundering and fraud. So far, Turkish protection Prosecution approved the pursuit of 42 people, including the sons of both ministers of interior and economy, who were held in temporary custody last Saturday, along with board director of Halk Bank, Suleiman Aslan, and the businessman, Rida Zrab. More than 20 people who are very close to Prime Minister Rajab Tayyip Erdogan were also arrested for involvement in the corruption scandal. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Genjan, but after a short break.